Adultery, no sin in the Bible is as great as adultery. And now we see J.C., when the Almighty never spoke to him in the New Testament, never said a mumbling word to him in the New Testament, even when he fell down three times and cried and asked the Father to forgive him and to take the cup from him, it said the Father never answered him one mumbling word. What was his last words? My, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I thought he was God. Then he should have been saying, "Is myself, myself, why did you forsake me? But he's not saying that. He's talking to someone else. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? This is embarrassing to the Christians. They've been praying and worshiping a man that has a God himself. They've been praying and worshiping a man that admits he is not God. Their prayer and worship and demand that his last words on earth that were recorded is, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, when you ask a preacher what this means, you know what the idiot will tell you? Oh, he's talking to himself. That's the God in him talking to the God. I, I, I can't even get that mess together that they say. But when they finish with it, they got him talking to himself. Then I say, was he a schizophrenia or something? Was he, you know, was he sick? Well, if he's not sick, then why is he talking to himself? Huh? Keep reading. Get back to Isaiah 53. Just wanted you to see that. Verse 7, he was oppressed. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. And he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. And he opened not his mouth. Now you know they ain't talking about J.C. Open not open his mouth. Because he, he accused the father of forsaking him. And he accused the father also of committing a great sin. I'll show you that later, but let's keep going right now. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison. He was taken from prison. And from judgment. And from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked. Made his grave with the wicked. And with the rich in his death. And with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence. Done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased Yahweh to bruise him. He had put him to grief. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. When thou shalt make his soul. Here we go. An offering for sin. He shall see his seed. See his seed. That means he got children. He shall prolong his days. That means he's going to live to be an older person. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of Yahweh shall prosper and in his hand. And it said the pleasure of Yah shall prosper in his hand, though. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. He shall be seen while he was suffering and he shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquity. He shall bear their iniquity. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. He's not the only great one. And I will divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he had poured out his soul unto death. He had poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And numbered with the sinners. With the transgressors. And he bore the sins of many. And he bore the sins of many. And made intercession for the transgressors. And made intercession for the transgressors. Now, who is this he? We say it's Israel, but they say, well, he's talking about one person, Alicia. He keeps saying him. He keeps talking in a singular vein. So, how could this be more than one? To find out who he's talking to, we have to see who he was talking to. The scripture said, when you study line upon line, doctrine upon doctrine, precept upon precept, here little and there little. If we want to know who he was talking about. All you have to do is go to a few verses before that 
Isaiah the 49th chapter. Isaiah the 49th chapter, the Almighty will let you know who his righteous servant is that he's speaking of. He says, Listen. verse 1. Listen, O owls, unto me. You're the creator of speaking, saying, Listen unto me, O owls. And hearken ye people from far. Yahweh have called me from the womb. Who has he called from the womb? Called me from the womb. Yah has called me in my mother's womb. From the bowels of my mother have he made mention of my name. And he had made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand have he hid me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver have he hid me. And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. So the servant that Yah is speaking of that he's going to be glorified in is called Israel. Now Israel is a nation, but he's going to show you that he's not talking to the whole nation. He's talking to a, a part of the nation that he called his elect. Notice what he says. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught. I've been trying to just make money so I can have a big house and a lot of money in the bank, but I labored in vain. I've been spending my strength in the wrong direction. And in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with Yahweh, and my work with my Elohim. And now saith Yahweh that formed me from the womb. To be his servant. To bring Jacob again to him. Wait, hold it. Now he's telling one Israel that I'm going to use you to bring Jacob to me, which is the other Israel. Though Israel be not gathered. And know that even though the nation of Israel is not gathered, he's going to use some Israelites to gather Jacob Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of Yah, my Elohim shall be my strength. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. In other words, he's not talking to the whole nation of Israel. He's talking to an elect few called the elect. And he said, It is a light thing that thou should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Israel and to protect Restore the preserve of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. I thought Christ was a light to the Gentiles. And here the creator said, I'm going to give you to be the light to the Gentiles. That thou may meet my salvation unto the ends of the earth. So if Israel is going to be Yah's salvation from one end of the earth into another, then where does Christ fit in? And he said, already just said, the only salvation that I'm going to have is Israel. Shall be my salvation from the ends of the earth. Thus saith Yahweh, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to him whom man despises. Talking about his elect. The him that man despises, and that's us. We're the ones that men despise Israel. To him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers. King shall see and arise. King shall see and arise. Princesses also shall worship because of Yahweh that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel. And he shall choose thee. Thus saith Yahweh. All right, he shall choose thee. Right here the Creator says in the seventh verse, Thus said Yah, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, speaking of us to whom men despise, to him whom the nations hate. A servant of rulers. Kings shall arise, shall see and arise, and princes shall worship. Who is he talking about? Where is this all sp spoken of that these people are supposed to hate us? Let's go to Isaiah, the 60th chapter. Isaiah, the 60th chapter. Almighty let you know that he's talking about Israel. The very first verse. Arise, 
shine. For the light is come. And the glory of Yahweh. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. 